Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Cahill. I'm the mayor here in the city of Beverly. I want to welcome you to our city. Welcome the governor and lieutenant governor. Um, I want to especially welcome you to our carriage house, our seasonal building. Sorry, there's, there's no heat or limited heat. We did turn the water back on for everyone. Um, this is a beautiful um, building, and like I said, it is only seasonal at the moment. We're trying to find a way to, uh, to improve it and make it a year-round resource for the community. Uh, but I, I want to just share a couple thoughts about our community. Beverly is um, a city of about 42,000 people. We have almost 14 miles of coastline, which most people don't think of, but we have our open ocean coastline and then we have two tidal rivers. Um, we have a lot, of, um, a, lot of, a lot of vulnerability to um, storm surge to rising sea level. Um, our downtown is surrounded by, uh, by water on three sides. So we have this beautiful park that we're in today, which is about a 14 acre park the city took ownership of uh, soon after World War II. And it's a, it's a real gem for our community. We run programming here um, outdoors and indoors from about April through October, uh, and it's the best sledding hill in town during the, during the winter. Um, so um, so there, there's a lot of, of beauty here, and there is real vulnerability, and we're excited uh, at, what, at what we um, uh, are anticipating hearing from the governor and ten, lieutenant governor and team in a couple minutes. Um, we also want to thank both our partners at the state and at, at Coastal Zone Management because we've been working on some of our, our vulnerabilities for the last several years. We've had grants to help us assess and figure out just how to deal with coastal erosion at Obier Park along the Danvers River, um, how, to, uh, how to deal with the projected um, flooding challenges we'll face along the Bass River, which is kind of on the backside of our downtown, right behind our uh, busiest train station. Um, we just received a grant through the CZM uh, Coastal Resiliency Grant Program to evaluate just how to, how to address this park, Lynch Park, and our future here. Um, we, we know that we can't just harden our coastlines. We know that we have to figure out how to live with the water that, that, that you know, tidally comes, comes up every high tide and is particularly problematic during storms. Um, so we're excited for those opportunities. Um, that's enough about Beverly. I'm, 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 I know we're here because everybody who's in the room has a connection to a coastal community in Massachusetts. Um, and, and working to protect all of, our, all of our great natural resources. So I just want to thank the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor and say this. Um, they're an amazing team, amazing partners. Um, they've been in office just about a year, is that right? And, and like anybody who governs, they came to office with an agenda and things they wanted to work on, and then things come and hit you in the face, right? And you, you end up reacting to so many things you need to deal with, and so much work that we do in government is about trying to help protect and improve people's lives. And so much of what the governor and lieutenant governor have had to deal with this year that's taken a lot of their time and energy and resources have been how to keep people safe, how to help people's lives be improved in the here and now. And today they'll be talking about really the same ideas, how to improve people's lives in, in really a longer view. Um, and so that's been, I know, part of their agenda, and I'm, I'm incredibly uh, appreciative, and I very much admire them for their uh, commitment to stick with their agenda. And even as they have been doing incredibly well the work that has been landing on their desks, they have not lost sight of the, the things that we all know need to happen around climate. And so there's amazing work going on in this state around cutting greenhouse gas emissions and I'm excited that we get to do that work every day. I know today is about how we deal with the effects and the impacts of coastal flooding particularly, and, and, and I know there's a lot more um, that they're working on when it comes to um, adapting to climate and being resilient in the face of, of, of climate change. So I'm just appreciative that they are, uh, that they put together the incredible team they have, and I know Secretary Tepper's here as well um, as director of CZM uh, Angler, and so I'm excited to hear from all of them. I'm going to step out of the way right now. Just the last thing I want to say is um, the Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll really have for the past year been such 
fantastic partners to cities and towns, and it makes me excited for what we'll all get to do together. I'm really excited that we all get to hear the rollout of this program that we're about to hear. So thanks, Governor Healy. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Oh. Well, thank you so much, Mayor Cahill, for welcoming us to Beverly, to uh, hosting us in this beautiful carriage house this morning. And thank you for your partnership on so many fronts, including the important partnership that we have around climate. And we're really pumped to be here today to talk about, in specifics, our coastal resiliency plan. Uh, we wanted to be here in particular because it's such a great community. Lynch Park represents um, something that is just a gift to, to all of Massachusetts. It's a place of natural beauty and historic significance. It's cared for by local government. Um, it's a space that brings community together and welcomes visitors. And it's a park that contributes positively to both public health and the local economy. So we thought a great place to make this announcement. Also, here on the coast, we see the impacts of climate every day. We see the impacts most recently of some of the severe flooding during storms, the kind of flooding that threatens this kind of park, this kind of community, and so many communities across Massachusetts. And that's why our Office of Coastal Zone Management is here today supporting efforts to envision and design a resilient future for places like Lynch Park. It's uh, terrific to be here with uh, with the Lieutenant Governor, who we'll say more about lately, uh, later. She's going to come up and, and share her thoughts as well. Um, I know both of us are really pleased to be here with our team, of course. We have our great Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, our Undersecretary of Decarbonization and Resilience, Catherine Antos, uh, Undersecretary of Environmental Justice and Equity, Maria Belen Power, and our Office of Coastal Zone Management Director, Lisa Engler. And we really thank the team for you know, going hard um, at this issue over the last 10 months, 11 months. Um, we've had a really robust agenda when it comes to doing what we said we'd do on, the, on climate, appointing a climate chief, 1% of the budget, right? All sorts of new positions and initiatives really, really leaning into this, um, treating it as both the challenge and the opportunity that it is. And I think today represents an announcement reflecting opportunity and the ways that we can think about proactively resilience and how we build forward and build healthier, stronger communities. And speaking of building healthier and stronger communities, it's great to have the partnership of Mayor Cahill and so many mayors, um, select board members, town administrators around the state. We do everything in partnership, and that includes our great legislative partners who are represented here today. So I want to thank Senator Bruce Tarr, Senator Joan Lovely for their presence here today. We also have from the House, Representative Jenny Armini, Representative Kristen Kasner, Representative Paul Schmid um, in the House as well. And I just, we, on behalf of the LG and I, we really, really appreciate everything that, that uh, you are doing. Did I miss Jerry? How did <laughs> <laughs> Representative Jerry Paracella is also with us. I saw him right out. Um, so it, it's great, and we appreciate everything that we're going to be able to do together. Um, you know, back in, I guess we were looking at some statistics, and it says that in 2070, it's estimated that we could see more than a billion dollars in coastal damages each year, a billion dollars in each year if we don't act. Um, that affects our small businesses, our coastal culture. Inaction hurts them the most. So today is about action, taking action. Uh, a few weeks ago, Secretary Tepper and her team re released a plan. It was the Resilient Mass Plan, which is a roadmap to supporting every community. And one of the priority action items of that plan calls for a dedicated focus on protecting our coastline and our coastal communities. This will be our state's first comprehensive strategy to protect our waterfront communities and ensure a strong and resilient future. This initiative is called the Resilient Coasts Initiative. And what it will do is work with communities to identify the best practices, best solutions to strengthen our coastline and protect our homes, businesses, and natural resources. It's super exciting. Uh, Secretary Tepper is going to tell you more about it, including our Chief Coastal Resilience Officer, a new position, uh, coastal resilience districts, which are new to be established, and developing new mechanisms for financing this work, because we've got to figure out a way to, to pay for it all, um, which will build on our team's pursuit of federal funding, which you know we've been successful at already. So uh, I just want to close by 
again, reiterating that while uh, climate change is not only our greatest challenge, it really is our greatest opportunity. And I think that we have an opportunity in Massachusetts to lead like no other state in this country when it comes to doing what we need to do. Opportunities to grow uh, and make safer and stronger our communities, to take care of our public places so that more folks can enjoy them, and to grow a coastal economy which will support coastal businesses and create great green jobs. So this is the work that we launched today. I thank Secretary Tepper and her team. And I want to uh, welcome up uh, your friend, and no stranger uh, to Beverly, somebody who knows and understands firsthand what it is to govern and to lead in a coastal community. And what the Lieutenant Governor made happen in the city of Salem is remarkable. Um, I am thrilled that she is our teammate, my teammate in particular, in this endeavor and on so many fronts. And it's, uh, it's a great joy to, uh, to welcome the LG. She got a shorter trip today, which is only fair, because usually I get the short <laughs> trip in from Boston uh, to work. So everybody, uh, let's, uh, let's welcome Kim Driscoll. Good morning, good morning. And it's terrific to be in Beverly, certainly with uh, my former colleague and now partner, Mike Cahill. Who, uh, the two of us worked really hard together on climate action plans between our two communities. And I think recognized early on, we share this beautiful coastline. I mean, it's magical being here when we're lucky enough um, to be this close to the water. And the fact that it's a public space, so many people enjoy Lynch Park, not just in Beverly, but it's a real regional asset. And I think we recognized early on that um, Salem Sound is a shared asset. And rather than uh, work independently to identify vulnerabilities and strategies to improve it, we'd be stronger working together. And uh, I think that's, that's very much the message for this announcement today. We have approximately 100 coastal communities in Massachusetts, and they all have different characters. We're here in a, in a magical place around the corner. Uh, a part of the coastline in Salem is hosting uh, our, the storage plant that serves five communities. Down the road, we've got industrial areas that are very necessary for the types of um, needs that we have across Massachusetts, whether it's an airport uh, or a power plant or uh, opportunities for us to make memories, coastal communities are really important and are also being threatened by the climate crisis. And instead of having uh, our coastal communities working independently to identify strategies, to understand mitigation, adaptation, efforts that we can take collectively, um, we recognize as a state, and I think Secretary Tepper and her team early on noted there's no way individual cities and towns can tackle this. There's no way that you have the know-how, the expertise, the combination of resources, the thinking that goes into how do we build better coastal communities? How do we protect and preserve these precious assets that are key to the identity of so many places in Massachusetts, in New England? And I think this effort uh, that we're launching here today is an homage to ensuring that the beauty, the majesty of living in a coastal, living, working in a coastal community, the industrious nature. I mean, Massachusetts was settled east to west, right? Recognizing that there were assets close to, uh, close to the coast that means a lot of what we're doing has outdated infrastructure, nearly 400 year, years old. And it makes it harder when we think about the redevelopment, the preservation, the mitigation, and the adaptation. And leading that effort collectively as a state, knowing that the climate crisis doesn't stop at any city or town line, is really critical. Um, I don't think there's a better place than Massachusetts to bring together the resources, the brain power, the people who are so invested, the number of nonprofits, um, real leaders in understanding the science behind what's happening and then what we can do about it. Uh, this is an effort to make sure we're not putting our head in the sand as we know what's happening with rising seas, but working together, locking arms, identifying strategies, that's only gonna strengthen our cities and towns as we move forward. So thrilled to be here, glad to have a short commute <laughs> this morning. Uh, I won't mention the Salem High football rivalry for Thanksgiving either. Mayor Cahill just said to me, oh, we missed you at all the festivities this year. And I said, we've got a good team this year. I mean, uh, but the reality is um, our communities might compete on Thanksgiving Day, but when it comes to the climate crisis, we are in partnership, trying to do all that we can. And now with uh, obviously the work of the state and having uh, an individual who's gonna get up every day wondering what can we do, how can we partner, how do we strengthen our efforts to ensure we're making the right decisions when it comes to protecting, mitigating, adapting, 
and preserving this amazing coastline. I'm proud to be part of a team that's working on that. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce Secretary Tepper, who's just done an outstanding job when it comes to both energy and environment, balancing ways that we can work together as a commonwealth to be a leader in this space. Secretary Tepper. Thank you so much for, for having us here today. Um, you know, to, in order to get to this point, today took a lot of people working very hard, and in particular, I really want to thank the community leaders, the town managers, um, our friends at NOAA, our friends in the legislature, and our uh, towns and communities in helping us think this through um, and helping us get to where we are today in partnership, as the governor and lieutenant governor emphasized. This problem is not a problem that you can take on town by town. This is a problem that we need to work on together as a state with real state leadership. So that's what our plan is. Um, and you'll get much more uh, details about that. Um, OK, I'm just noticing that I have the wrong. I have Lisa's notes. Would you like your notes? I don't have yours, though. Just, thank you. So you won't have all the stuff I changed, so now, you know, it's going to ha have to be... <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Thank you. Um, so, so today uh, we are announcing a strategic initiative to protect and preserve the Massachusetts coast in the face of climate impacts. As we are gathered here, we are keenly aware that our coastal communities face unparalleled risk to infrastructure, to buildings, to natural resources due to coastal storms and climate change. As you know, we have 1,500 miles of shoreline spanning 78 different towns and cities. It's made up of ports and, and harbors and marshes and parks and beaches. This coastline has shaped our culture and it has made us what we are as a state in Massachusetts. Hardworking, resourceful, resilient. Today, more than ever, as we are all know here today, because we all have been worked on this issue for a long time, our coastline is vulnerable to, to climate change. We've seen the impacts already. I don't know if yesterday you noticed that yesterday uh, was a king tide, um, and a king tide in Boston means uh, flooding of Long Wharf, and that's exactly what <coughs> happened yesterday. So we've seen the sea levels rising, um, combined with more severe storms and coastal erosion. And as we work to slow climate change, we still know that these impacts are going to get worse. So I think um, you all know about the, the threat that this um, faces to the whole state. It's really a threat, threat to our economy. It's a threat to our homes and businesses. It's a threat to local infrastructure and our utilities. It's a, safety, it's a threat to our safety and our well-being of our residents, especially those who have the fewest resources to protect themselves. But these challenges offer a opportunity. And together, we are building coastal communities that will be safer and more equitable for years to come. So many of you standing here today with us and many others who couldn't make it um, have been talking about this for several months, um, about this large challenge and what role the state can help play uh, in addressing it. And everyone here, I know, is committed to tackle this issue in partnership. As uh, the Lieutenant Governor said, you know, no one community uh, can do this alone. This is truly a regional and a statewide issue that needs to be addressed together. Um, and to lead these efforts, uh, we will be having a new Office of Coastal Resilience that will be led by a Coastal Resilience Officer uh, housed within CZM. Um, and they will be spending 100% of their time on this issue um, and thinking in partnership uh, about ways to move forward. And Lisa will have uh, more information about that. 
Um, so with that, I will turn it over to our director of the CZM, Lisa Barry Engler. I have your notes if you So I have my own version of my notes that have, have my notes which make them better. Uh, thank you, Secretary Tepper. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. It's so um, heartwarming and exciting and just exhilarating to see all the people in the room and how this room is so filled up with people that really want to work on this effort together. Um, it's really an honor to be here today, and I know that I speak for all of the folks at CZM, many of whom are represented today here, that we are really excited to be charged with making the Resilient Coast Initiative a reality. Uh, as the lead policy, planning, and technical assistance agency on coastal and ocean issues for the state, CZM's programs provide a whole bunch of information, strategies, tools, financing mechanisms to help coastal communities and stakeholders deal with climate change impacts. You know, since 2014, we've had the Coastal Resilience Grant Program, and it's provided $46 million for local and regional efforts to deal with this critical issue. So we've worked with coastal communities for a long time. We know many of you personally. Um, this is a really critical issue for all of you and for, and for us as well. And we're really excited to stand here together with you, ready to deliver um, even more on, the, on how to address this issue. You know, this is really why we feel like CZM is uniquely positioned um, to help direct this and lead this initiative. You know, we have a proven record, track record in bringing together policy and scientific experts, business and nonprofit stakeholders, and then all levels of government to address complex issues and develop pragmatic solutions. We like to say that we follow the science and then we put it into policy and action. Second, CZM um, maintains, as I said, these close connections with our coastal communities. CZM has five regional offices. We have our North Shore office, Boston Harbor, South Shore, Cape and Islands, and then the South Coastal Regional Office. And these offices and the regional coordinators within them have provided technical assistance, connect local officials with state and federal resources, coordinate regional initiatives, and so much more. And we've done this for a long time, and we continue to do it. And this is really how we work so strongly and effectively is through this partnership, through our regional offices and through the coastal communities and other um, nonprofits and partners along the coast. Lastly, I want, want to just stress um, that we have this other tool at our disposal at CZM, and that's our regulatory, regulatory review role that we um, have with over state and federal projects. So we have, through this, this other role, we've developed strong policies that help ensure coastal projects are developed in a balanced and sound manner. Uh, this expertise is, will be readily applied as we think through resilient coasts and also think through how we can review our existing regu regulatory atmosphere um, and universe and how those may need to be adapted and updated through this process. So this accumulated expertise along with financial resources provided by programs like the Coastal Resilience Grant Program and then also the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program offer a really synergistic opportunity for developing and implementing this program. And I just want to pause and say, you know, I'm up here as the representative of CZM, as the director um, of CZM, but CZM is not going to be doing this alone, right? It's really about all of you, and then it's all about the state and agency partners that we have as well. And it's about the Climate Office, ADEA. We're going to be partnering and working together on this initiative and really leveraging the expertise that's all over state government right now to really bring um, all of that important expertise to bear on this issue. So I want to say that we're well underway um, to get Resilient Coasts off the ground. We've convened a Coastal Resilience Task Force. Some of you got emails from us last week. Um, thank you for hopefully saying yes to that. Um, you are experts and community leaders, and you're going to help us um, guide this initiative. We're also looking at funding. Many of you were partners on a, a successful, or in part successful, grant application to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration um, and their Climate Regional Re Resilience Challenge. 
Resilience Regional Challenge. Um, and that was you know, a huge effort, $73 million with 55 partners. Um, we are asked back to submit a full application and we're excited to go after these federal funds and go after them aggressively so we can bring these dollars to Massachusetts and help address these issues. Um, as the Secretary said, we're also really excited to grow our team. We're gonna have a Chief Coastal Resilience Officer at CZM. We've never had that role before at CZM. That's pretty awesome. Um, and so I want to just say that if you know anyone or if you're interested, you know who to call. Call me. Um, this upcoming year will be a really exciting one as we bring all this expertise and experience to bear. We're going to be working collaboratively, collaboratively with all of you, with our academic and nonprofit experts, business interests, and all others interested in this coastal environment. So thank you again to Secretary Tepper. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for your confidence and for this opportunity. And last, I am, but certainly not least, I'm going to introduce a close uh, and longtime CZM colleague, Christian Crawforth, who is the Climate Adaptation and Conservation Director for the Town of Hull. Wow, thank you for that um, introduction. Um, yeah, so I am the Director of Climate Adaptation and Conservation in the Town of Hull, and we created this position uh, just last year through um, our annual town meeting. And I think it's largely because really all of the tremendous hard work that the Healy Driscoll administration has been doing in the short time that they've been in place, and we have been for years, trying to keep up with the Commonwealth's resources to actually address coastal resiliency and ad adaptation. Um, if many of you probably are familiar with the town of Hall, we're sort of that little mini cape on the southern portion of Boston Harbor. FEMA um, identifies our town to be roughly about 66% in the floodplain. Um, and then we actually had some students from Cornell a few years ago come in and take a look at our economic um, situation in light of climate change. And they had an interesting conclusion for the town of Hall. They did a study for uh, neighboring communities and included Cohasset and Hingham. But for the town of Hall, the ultimate projection was um, that it would be part of the nat National uh, Harbor Islands cl complex. And so it sort of presents a fairly dismal future for the town of Hall. I don't necessarily um, buy into that projection and have done some math myself to figure out that we will have much more serious problems than sea level rise by the time Hull is inundated and in such that it's an island. Specifically these high precipitation events, which turns out for the town of Hull in the past couple of years has been the major flooding event in the town of Hull. Local flooding in, a, in a, a barrier island that is at sea level, doesn't have a whole lot of infiltration and water accumulates, and is uh, dependent upon the tides. So um, we are um, grateful for the resources that this Commonwealth, that the Baker administration had established and then has just uh, accelerated under the Healy Driscoll administration. And I, I have to say, um, I, am, I am more busier today than I have ever been, and we've created the capacity to, to deal with these resources. So, so thank you for that. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna close briefly with a couple of um, points in the town of Hull. So if we have a big event, it's our town that's completely affected. We have a wastewater treatment facility that serves at least two communities besides ourselves, located in one of the, probably the most vulnerable areas in the town of Hull. So when that was built, climate change wasn't even in the minds or on the horizons of most people. It is now. We have a, a municipal light plant that's right on the shores that we're addressing. We have sea level rise that's actually um, like today, this building. Take a look at this. Uh, we are still slightly in the king tide period. So I think around 1130 today, you'll see some pretty high waters around this building. We also have a municipal a DPW facility that's located along the uh, Weir River estuary that is experiencing periodic flooding now. So we have these huge issues and how do we deal with this? We are also looking at a community level application of how do we adapt, create an adaptation roadmap for 
the community. And we have, um, so we've, we've actually um, enrolled in the Municipal Vulnerability Program um, funding to develop that roadmap, and we're in our second year of looking at that. And through that, we're having some very um, difficult discussions. We had managed, uh, we, had, we had brought up managed retreat, and there was a lot of dead silence, but sort of folks asking, what does that really mean? And uh, so we actually learned that maybe the better word for that is planned retreat. Here's what we're doing in our roadmap, but keep in mind that, you know, this is a possibility. And nobody's bought into, oh yeah, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna include that in our long-term plan. But the conversation is there. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm a, I could talk to you for hours on each one of these projects. Feel free to grab me, but I do, again, just wanna close and really thank um, our administration for the resources that you are providing. And I, I look forward to participating in a lot of the networks that's developing. How do we fund these projects across many different funding sources? That's happening too, and that's just beginning. So the other, and yeah, one last piece in closing. Climate change, um, you know, we, we can come up with resilient strategies. Mostly those are infrastructure or nature-based solutions. But the other, pack, other aspect of this is societal. We may be losing more so those that are on the margins. And I think Hull's a good example. People with resources still value, the land value in Hull hasn't changed, it's gone up. But we are losing those that could, that are there that can't, can no longer afford. And with these resilient strategies that folks can tap into that have the resources, they will be there. So that's a concern, and I don't know what the answer is, but that's something also that we're thinking as a, as a community, how do we move forward and how do, we, um, how do we prevent that divide from becoming larger and larger? Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much to all of our speakers. Um, huge thanks to Mayor Cahill and, uh, and, and Beverly for hosting this, this great announcement this morning and many, many thanks to our team for their initiative and leadership on this. Um, you know, every day the charge is to, to put the pedal to the metal and do as much as we can as quickly as we can and bring urgency and intentionality to sort of everything that we do. Um, and certainly in this space, you know, this is something that, that EEA and the team uh, at CZM have really delivered on in partnership with all of you. So we thank all of you in this room for your efforts. I want to thank our legislative partners, uh, not only for appropriating, but making sure that we have the funding to do this work. So huge thanks to all of our legislators. We've got so many great folks representing so many uh, coastal communities here all over the state. So we appreciate your continued leadership and, and partnership as we move ahead. Um, I know that, that folks will stick around and enjoy uh, this wonderful venue and have a chance to mingle, but we're happy to take questions uh, before we do that. Uh, anything on topic? I think that you know what, we're, what we'll do is look to see what the team comes up with, what the plan is. This is again a plan that will be created and developed in partnership with community. Secretary, I don't know if you have more you want to offer on that. I mean, certainly part of part of this initiative is to talk about hard questions, and one of the things that we'll really be focusing on is in different areas of the state, what are the resilient measures that are available to address the concerns that c communities have. So we'll be having hard conversations um, in various places, and we're looking forward to having that conversation um, about the resilient strategies that are available. Yes, Dan. Yeah. So first, how is this different? Um, this is the first time that the state will look coastwide at, uh, comprehensively at what vulnerabilities are to our coastal communities. And so 
this is really the, the first time that we've been able to look at such a large geographic scale. You know, the communities have been leading on their own through the help of state programs and EEA funding programs to look at those vulnerabilities and adaptation options. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to think more collaboratively, be able to think more regionally, and then be able to share lessons learned across parts of the coast that might share characteristics um, that, and might share vulnerabilities. Um, and then this is also an opportunity to be proactive and not respond ad hoc um, as emergencies come up. We really want to be thinking down the line and have a more future perspective. So that's how it's, it's different. Um, and then, um, you know, how will this result in implementation on the ground? <coughs> I think we will be using the existing uh, methods that are available to us now. You know, we have funding strategies in place. We have regulatory and policy um, and other local standards that we can utilize. But then we can also plan and we will be making recommendations about how to fund these resilient strategies over time and we'll be working with our legislators and, and policymakers to help think about how we can implement those financing mechanisms as well as potentially regulatory and policy changes as well. I think today is really exciting and it once again shows Massachusetts leadership in this space. First state to announce a climate chief who sits above all secretariats to drive a strong climate agenda. Similarly, we um, are really proud to announce today something that I'm not aware other states are doing, at least not to this degree, this kind of proactive engagement and planning, thinking about this as an opportunity. How do we build forward in a way that creates not only more sustainable communities, but also economically empowered communities? That's what today's announcement is about. We have a person who is going to be dedicated solely to working with our coastal communities within the Office of Coastal Zone Management. That's a first. That's a big deal. We're announcing today a resilience plan. That's a first and a big deal. And by the way, it's done in partnership with input from community. This isn't going to be top down because we know very well, and certainly the LG knows, that our best ideas and our best results, which is what we're in this business for, come from that kind of collaboration partnership. Because what works in Westport may not work in Newburyport. And so, you know, that's why we're, we're doing this in a way that is really looking at the whole state, but also incorporating through the continued task force efforts and the uh, planning process a way that's going to work for all of our 100 coastal communities. So we're super excited about this. Um, you know, the news, we, we live with every day the severity of climate change. We spent a lot of time, the LG and I did this summer, traversing central and western Massachusetts, visiting devastated farms, cities and towns with blown culverts and dams and bridges and infrastructure, right? We know the work that we need to do as a state, but one thing I am proud of is this state and particularly this team's leadership in grabbing the bull by the horns and saying we're going to take this opportunity to do what needs doing. With that, we're going to see great new green jobs. We're going to see new innovations and entrepreneurship. And like always, Massachusetts and this region in particular will find ways to power not just this country, but with the world when it comes to building for the kind of resilience that we need for what is happening. So I'm super excited about that and look forward to, uh, to the partnership. And again, I just want to just acknowledge and appreciate it. We see so many familiar faces in the room, folks who've been at this a long time, advocating for this kind of action, and today we're delivering. So thank you all for being here.